it's a pretty uh, pretty interesting job up here. Pretty varied, pretty neat. You know, we're standing here in the snow, and uh, my wife and I live on the mountain, so it's a very unique opportunity. Not many like this around to to live so close to town, but yet in such a wild, natural environment. My name is Devin Mankey and I'm the wildlife manager for the Grouse Mountain Refuge for Endangered Wildlife and that basically means that I look after and manage the, the refuge that we have here on Grouse Mountain. The wolves here at Grouse Mountain came to us about eight years ago now. They were former movie industry wolves. They were born and raised in captivity. They were going to be trained to be movie actors but for whatever reason they weren't trained properly and they actually ended up being quite shy around cameras and around people. So they're kind of fired or retired to be a, a to use a gentle term from the movie industry. They were living in dog kennels. Their owners put out a an all points bulletin saying, you know, can anybody provide a better home for these wolves? And our veterinarian and director, Dr. Kim McQuiston, heard about them and approached Mountain and said, why don't we create a habitat here on Grouse for these for these three wolves? We refer to our wolves here at Grouse Mountain as timber wolves. Um, the all of the wolf populations around the world are one species, uh, Canis lupus but different populations get different names. So there's timber wolves, gray wolves, plains wolves, arctic wolves. And these guys are more resemble a timber wolf in size and in color. The dark alpha gray and black wolf, he's a, a very typical timber wolf. Our two white wolves could be closer to arctic wolves in size, but given that uh, they're living in a forested area and they're about the size of a timber wolf, that's how we tend to refer to them. Uh, Grinder and Kula, our two grizzly bears, were the reason the refuge was founded in the first place. So in 2001, they were found orphaned in the wild in British Columbia. Bears at the time had nowhere to go. They were either put down or potentially shipped to zoos, which were full of bears already. So this was a unique opportunity to get them here and establish a more natural type of refuge for them. The bears are behind me in what we uh, affectionately call the Bear Hotel, which is their bear den. It's a large building that we've constructed so that they can be inside here during our ski season, during the winter time, and be relatively undisturbed. They have a wooden chamber at the back where they make their own bed. They, we provide them with sticks and branches. They'll drag them in, make a big bed to sleep on. We have this building out in front because one thing we learned in their first few years, their first few years, they just had a little chamber to sleep in. And they were actually pretty active. They get up every day and move around, uh, remake the bed, do a bit of grooming, stretching. So we provided them after the first couple years with a larger building in front of their den so that if they choose to, they can actually come out of their sleeping chamber and go for a little walk in here, check out the weather, check out the light, um, even lie or play in the snow a little if they want to and then go back into their um, bedroom. Here at Grouse Mountain, our use of the infrared cameras was a pretty novel um, idea back in 2001 and we were one of the first people to do that, to put an infrared camera inside a sleeping bear's chamber. We've uh, taken a lot of data, we've uh, sort of come up with designations for different types of behavior, grooming, bed making, stretching, and we've quantified just how much activity they do and it's surprising. A lot of people thought bears just went to sleep and laid on their side for the whole time, but it's not the case, they're actually very active. It's pretty cool living up here on Grouse Mountain. So my wife and I live in this uh, cabin right back there. And as part of the job, so that I'm close to Grinder and Kula, it's a part of the job is to live up here. It comes with the territory. And then my office is right here. So it's a really easy commute in the mornings and after work to go sort of between home and the, home and the office. And you get to see a lot of things. You know, even on my own time in the evenings, I'll go for a walk from home and I'll be out with Grinder and Kula in a few minutes. So I'll just go out there just because it's really cool and awesome to hang out with a couple grizzly bears and watch what they're doing in the habitat.